Becky, look at this. <gasps> Is it capiz? Or I think it's folk capiz. I love it. You're welcome. <laughs> this fall, coming to a home near you. Oh my god, these strings. Someone needs to solve the world glue gun crisis. That is, these strings. Can I call dibs on this if I made it? Ta-da! Hi everyone, my name's Kelsey. And my name is Becky. And we are the Sorry Girls. And welcome back to another Thrift Flip. This is not our typical intro because it's pouring rain outside. <laughs> or it's so rainy. It's raining. <laughs> We can't do that, so we're huddled up in Kelsey's car. But today we want to do some fall decor. I know it's like not quite the end of fall, but we're already kind of feeling the fall vibes. So it's been raining, it's been a little colder. So I think we're gonna go just try and find some things that speak, speak, oh my god, speak fall to us. Speaking of speaking, what? You were having trouble speaking. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> All right, let's go get some fall decor. Hello. He's waiting for you. I don't mind if I do. Can we talk about this? Is it even September yet? Nope. You are more than a month away. It's because it's their biggest seller of the year. Oh my god, I wanted to Disney bound as her. Maybe I should just do it for Halloween. Yeah, but can you do it different than this? <laughs> I can thrift in this exact store much better costume than this pre-made thing. Hashtag no offense. Yeah. Love brass. So cute. I'm just gonna add it. Add to cart. <laughs> Bet you didn't think you needed this badger sculpture thing. Bet you didn't think you needed five of them. <laughs> I can't see, I still can't see. I still can't see. Wow, I really can't see. Is this ceramic? I bet it's real. You think? It's kind of cool. I think it's too dirty to be fake. Like, look at that. It looks like crystallized. Like, if it was ceramic, it wouldn't be shiny, right? I don't know. But also, they're attached. Yeah, I feel like it's not real. <laughs> Either way. Add to cart. Add to cart. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'd do with this, but I like her. That's it's cool. kind of cool. You could even paint it on like a stack of books. I feel like <gasps> it's a mood. Oh. If anyone knows, I think her name's Jemary. Jemary? Jim Jemary on YouTube. She has a lot of these things. And they're very bad. Add her to the cart. <laughs> Honestly, I swear, in the summer, the thrift store is just full of ex wedding decor. I know. So many white candles sometimes, like vases. <laughs> This hidden compartment DIYs, how do I open it? I see the hinges on the back. Uh, oh my god, for when your CDs are so secretive, you need to hide that. <laughs> <That's> actually... <laughs> it's actually true because those CD stacks everyone had in the 2000s were really ugly. We should make this like cuter books. Yeah, do that, dorm room. Add the cart. Hidden compartment. Wait, I feel like this matches the woman so well. The sleekness of it. We should make a set. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Oh my god, I'm excited. I'm always nervous when vases yeah. have lids. I'm like, they're the urines? Yeah. 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 Exactly. Look, another one. I know. You gotta be careful when you're at the thrift store. <laughs> Can't do it without it. All right, we're back, and we have a pretty good haul. I think um, we didn't find like any one big item, mm -hmm. but I'm really excited by the multiple little items that we found. These are one of my favorite videos when we just make over a bunch of little things that looked interesting to us and turn them into something cool. So, what do we got? Okay, so let's get this out of the way. The first thing, I guess, is maybe the biggest thing we got is this faux book pile. This was seven dollars. It's some Charles Dickens book. <laughs> Oh no, one is, and then one's Shakespeare. But the best part about this is that it is... <laughs> so <laughs> hidden, you can't open it yourself. Hidden compartment DIYs. Hidden compartment DIYs. I think this is so weird to me because it has like the slots in it. I think it was for like CD storage. Yeah. Which is, I guess, something you could hide. This is definitely like a home sense thing, eh? Yeah. Like sure. cover up your CDs, but I feel like nobody even has CDs, but it's just a great hidden compartment DIY. And if we can make these books look more modern. Yeah, because they're kind of gothic and dark right now, which yeah. is not the mood. So if they were our style, oh my God, that'd be so cute. This antler crown centerpiece thing, this was $10, honestly. We're gonna see what we can do with this, including maybe fixing these um, broken bits. Yeah, something about antlers makes me think of fall and winter time, so this is a good DIY for this theme today. Something, maybe it's hunting season. Oh. No, my, my head was going to like Rudolph and reindeers. Oh, okay. Happy time. 
Yeah. Next up we have this brass vase and she was just so pretty and I like the shape of it. And it was only $2. Yeah. So I think we can think of something really cool to do with this. And this next one I kind of picture in conjunction with that one as like a set. So we have our femme half face here. Um, <laughs> this was $7. And then this is just a regular vase. It was $5, but it's a little beaten up. Yeah. So I think we can upcycle it a little bit. Yeah. Make some sweet shelf decor. All right, so um, do you want to get started with one of those items? Okay. Okay. Okay, so first up, I'm gonna try and tackle what is part of this antler decor. It's since broken, so my very first step is gonna be to actually fix some of the horns so that we can make it into something after. So to do that, I think the best plan is to use just regular old oven bake modeling clay. So I'm gonna mold some pieces that I think will fit into the broken areas and then we can bake them. And then hopefully that puts us on the right track to fixing these antlers. So with the clay, I'm rolling out some snake shapes and then cutting them down and then making one end kind of a little more pointier so that it looks like the tip of the missing antlers. I'm making three pieces that fit nicely into the missing places of the broken antlers. Then they go in the oven according to the instructions on the box. And once they are cooked, they are solid and looking like this and I can just add them into the missing spots with some super glue. Then use some sandpaper to just sand down any rough edges and make sure that they fit nice and flush up against where they were broken off from. Okay, so this is how my Restore It antlers are looking so far. They fit really nicely, but they do look a little out of place just because they're so much whiter than the rest. So instead of trying to color match them, I think I'm just gonna spray paint this whole thing white, make it look fresh and clean and maybe not so realistic. Okay, so my antlers are now completely painted white and I think the broken tips now blend a lot better if you weren't even looking for them you wouldn't notice. So my plan for this, when I saw it, I thought because it was already in a ring shape that it would actually make the most beautiful little fall wreath to put on your door. Or if you put it like this, it could also be a centerpiece. So to do that, I have a collection of leaves and flowers and little dried grass things that remind me of fall. Like the color scheme I think is very fall time. So what I'm gonna do is just use some hot glue to glue around the back of the antlers to fill out my wreath. So I'm starting by laying out the pieces that I have and kind of pre-arranging how I want them to go so that when I go to glue them on, I already know what the plan is. Then working in rows, I'm just laying things down and gluing them on with some hot glue. Oh, it's cute, yay. <laughs> Once all the back frilly bits are done, I flipped it over so I could stick on my larger fake flowers onto the front. Lastly, I'm just tying a cord onto the top in a neutral color so I can hang it when it's finished. So this is my completed wreath. I actually love how this turned out. I think it's so cute and you would totally buy this in like a home goods store for probably lots of monies. It certainly doesn't look like that brown broken antler decor we found at the thrift store. I think we did a good job on this one. So our thought in how to upcycle this brass pot is actually to turn it into a hanging planter. But instead of just like drilling holes and adding some string as we've done before and you guys have seen before, we're going to be using some floral wire hoops to create a really cool circle hanging pot effect. So for this DIY, I picked up two 10 inch floral rings and then I wanted another ring to go on the bottom so that I can connect them to make kind of like a triangle. But unfortunately I couldn't find one small enough so instead I just picked up some wire and I'm going to make my own floral ring, I guess. So I'm just cutting my thicker wire to size to make a circle that's gonna go at the bottom of the pot. To make my ring, I'm just using some super glue to glue the edges together. And then since I'm going to be covering up this section anyways, I just decided to wrap it with some tape to make sure it's extra secure. And then with my large ring, my small ring, and my larger ring laid out, I'm going to start wrapping the small ring and the large ring together using some smaller bendable wire. I'm gonna wrap this around a bunch of times and I'm finishing it off by going back through the other direction that I was wrapping it to make sure it's nice and secure. And then I did that again on the other side. And then when it's done, they can fold up together with the pot in the middle and it's 
almost complete. My next step was adding on a jump ring. And then I finished it off with some chain as well as another jump ring at the very top. Okay, this is my final piece and I think it's coming along well, but you know, I know mixed metals are a thing, but I'm not really feeling all of these metals exactly. So I'm gonna take this downstairs and spray paint it to match the brass of my pot here. So this is what my hanger is looking like, all painted brass, and it looks so much more cohesive. And I cannot believe how easy this DIY was. I came back in here being like, all right, well, what's the next step I have to do? But like, literally, this is the next step. Just place in my pot. <laughs> Can I call dibs on this if I made it? It's so cute. I'm gonna go put some greenery or plant in here, maybe something fall inspired, and let's go see how it looks. Okay, next up we have this set, which it's not currently a set. We just thought they were so beautiful that we wanted to make them a set of shelf decor pieces. So the goal here is gonna try and make them look more cohesive. So I'm gonna start with the vase. It's currently this gray, and like we said, it's very scratched up. So I want to paint it a nice nude. I feel like that has a similar vibe as the lady whose skin is maybe nude in my head. Um, so I'm gonna take some nude paint because I don't have a spray paint this color and hand paint this guy nude. So once that's dry, I'm coming in with this really nice burnt orange color that reminds me so much of fall and honestly just drawing kind of like a blob shape on it. <laughs> you really can't go too wrong with this. And then after I'm just taking this liquid gold leaf paint and literally just kind of drawing around the vase in like whatever I feel like, just a simple line drawing. I'm just kind of going like around the edge and then I'm coming down the bottom here, just kind of making like really an organic shape. Like I said, you like can't do this too wrong. While I have you guys here, something crazy we just found out is that actually our partner manager told us that only 50% of the people that watch our videos are actually subscribed to our channel which is kind of wild. So if you find yourself coming back to our videos, you enjoy our content, we inspire you at all, make sure to give us a subscribe because if that 50% of people that don't subscribe but watch our content subscribe, that would make a crazy difference. Thanks guys. Okay, and then for our lady, she is a little bit dirty and dingy from the thrift store. So the first step into transforming her is just gonna be to clean it. That's an important step in anything that you get from the thrift store if you can, is to give it a wipe down, especially because, can we discuss how they always, at a certain thrift store, do the red marker on beautiful objects? Why? It infuriates me. So we're gonna try and clean it off. That's the first step. So now she's all clean. What I wanna do on this is do a very simple line drawing over some of her features. My favorite kind of art is line art. We can pop some photos into here, especially of faces or bodies. So I think it'd be really cool to do a little bit of a gold detail line over top of her just to elevate it a little bit. So because I'm not entirely confident in my freehand skills, I'm gonna go over it with pencil first just to make sure I like the line and then come in with a gold leaf pen after to cover over it. So this is how she turned out, and honestly, this is a lot better than I thought it would be. It's so, so, so cute, and like it's so easy to do because the shapes are already there. All I had to do was just essentially trace it with a pen. So now that she's done, we can see how it looks together as a set with my vase that I painted. Oh, they're so good together. These styles on the shelves with the burnt orange and the nudes and the golds, they're so like warm and cozy, but also like really stylish. It was so easy to do because there's like literally things from the thrift store, love it so much. I think I'm gonna put some dried grasses in the vase to complete it, and then we can see how they look together. So for this book DIY, I think the first thing is to get rid of this dark color. So the first step is going to be spray painting the whole outside a nice white. And then we can come in with some warm tones later. 
So I'm back with my white painted books and my next step is to kind of paint these books in a more desirable color scheme. So I pulled out kind of the colors that we have. They're like warm, fall, nudie, rust colors. And really, I'm just gonna get to work. I'm gonna start with kind of the bigger colors and then I can come back in and do some details. So once my books were painted white, I then took a nudie color to paint my smallest book. Is that one supposed to be beige? I was gonna leave that one white. <laughs> And then I left the middle book white. And then on my largest book, I did a two-toned effect with a pink as well as a rust-covered spine. Now it's time to write on the titles of my books. So my middle book on the white is going to be called House and the Home. And then that made me think of our Shorty Award that we won. So then I turned the whole book into a 2018 Shorty Award winner book by the sorriest of girls. Although just for a disclaimer, we are not sorry. Every delivery person ever that comes to our door goes, why are you guys sorry? And I'm like, you are the most annoying ever. But anyways, I digress. I'm doing a simple um, like Chanel inspired number 61 book and then on my largest book here I didn't want it to be too clouded so I just did a simple monstera leaf and I use a metallic paint pen to do a lot of the words on these books because I thought it would tie really nicely into our metallic brass pot to really make this whole fall vibe come together. So in the end I have my monstera book, my house and home book, my perfume inspired book. And I think this is way cuter of a hidden compartment DIY. I think this would look really good on a shelf. Also, again, it was kind of supposed to be, like you could still do it this way, but I picture it this way with maybe a little something something on top. I'm so into this and I think it would look really good in a home this fall. This fall, coming to a home near you. I think we created an amazing fall vibe from all of these things. And if, at the very least, I hope this just helps you to think about things in the thrift store in a different way. Mm -hmm. Some fresh eyes about like all the things you really can do with thrift store items. Honestly, there's something there for everybody. And I know you guys are always like, it's your Canadian magic thrift store that we found. But honestly, we've had the same success in like Pennsylvania. LA, so I think it's just like training yourself to look at things, the potential that they could be. Mm -hmm. Also, we go there a lot, but still. Thank you guys for tuning in to this week's video. If you want to give this channel a video, where is Thank you guys for tuning in to today's video. If you like this video, give it a good old like. And if you love it, make sure you stop it. And we will see you next time. Bye guys. Bye. Hi guys, welcome to the end screen and a huge shout out to Ann Castro Art who throwing it back made our DIY neon sign sign and it's so, so cute. I love how it turned out. Awesome job, girl. If you make any of our DIYs, send them to us on Instagram using the hashtag Squad so we can see it.